Of all the advantages that the aeroplane has given us, perhaps none is greater than its use in case of illness. Places that are normally days apart can be traversed in as many hours. We're in an air ambulance bound from Glasgow to the western islands of Scotland. Whilst these islands attract the tourist, to whom time is of no moment and the leisurely journey a delight, a critical illness demands rapid transport. Under such conditions, the air ambulance is the only method. Soon we're over the city and the great Clyde, speeding westward on our errand of mercy. It's time that matters. How quickly can we get there? And how soon can we return to the hospital with the patient? A few hours instead of days completes the journey, and gently the air ambulance lands. The patient is already waiting for the plane, and in a few moments is safely on board. One day, perhaps, the story of air ambulance work will be written. It will tell of bravery, devotion, yes, and thrills that will equal any other air saga. Like most humane work, it's little known. For the actors of these dramas expect only the reward of a duty well done. A minute later, and we're off on the return journey. Less than two hours ago, the patient was taken on board, and now we're already over the great shipyards of the Clyde. If you look closely in the centre of the next picture, you can see the unfinished Canada 534. Whilst the air ambulance is flying, the motor ambulance is on its way to meet it. When it lands at the aerodrome, Think what the journey would have been by road, boat or train, with innumerable changes and costly delays, costly in terms of human life. As it is, the patient is soon transferred to the ambulance. Then, after a swift journey through the streets of Glasgow, he's taken into one of its great hospitals, 